TikTok's got the eyeballs, but not the dollars. The app's crazy popular, no doubt. Just ask the millions of teens and young adults who seemingly can't put it down. But while TikTok serves up videos by the billions, it's still figuring out how to serve up cold, hard cash to its biggest stars. Let's get real here. TikTok's idea of paying creators is beyond weak. We're talking pennies on the dollar for creators who pull in tens of millions of views. Does that sound sustainable to you? Me neither. Take Kabi Lame, TikTok's number one creator. The dude's got over 150 million TikTok followers. More than entire countries have people. But his TikTok payout for merely 20 billion views? A measly 500 grand? I don't know Kabi's situation, but I gotta imagine his rent is more than $500,000. YouTube, on the other hand, pays out some serious cash to creators. We're talking millions for the view counts Kabi sees. Now it makes sense why TikTok's biggest names are leaving to YouTube like the buildings on fire. But it's not just creators feeling the heat. TikTok itself burned through billions last year trying to keep its talent happy, all while still paying them literal pennies per view. Not exactly a sustainable business model. This massive income gap is driving top TikTok stars like Charlie D'Amelio and Addison Rae to also establish themselves on YouTube. They're chasing the stronger monetization model that YouTube provides. Can't say I really blame them. TikTok is at a crossroads. Sure, it's the hottest social media app right now, but the realities behind the scenes paint a more uncertain future for the platform. In this video, we uncover the shaky foundation TikTok is built on. From insufficient creator payouts to issues attracting advertisers, TikTok is racking up problems like there's no tomorrow. These aren't minor hiccups either. They're fundamental threats to the app's long-term viability. Remember Vine? TikTok could be heading down a similarly disastrous path if it doesn't fix its monetization model fast. Stick around as we spill the tea on why your favorite TikTok stars are pulling up stakes for YouTube. The reasons just might surprise you. YouTube has several structural advantages that have allowed it to build a better monetization model for creators compared to emerging platforms like TikTok. Firstly, YouTube's partner program shares 55% of ad revenue generated on videos with the creators who posted them. Channels that meet eligibility requirements can enroll in this program and start earning. Even mid-tier YouTubers with moderate view counts can make a comfortable living from ad share. TikTok, on the other hand, is still in the early stages of building its creator compensation models. Payouts amount to only a few pennies per thousand views, paltry in comparison to YouTube. TikTok stars with massive follower count struggle to turn that fame into earnings on par with YouTube. YouTube also provides more avenues for branding, sponsorships, and merchandising. Companies routinely partner with top YouTubers to promote or co-create products and campaigns. And YouTube allows creators to link to their merchandise shops directly below videos. TikTok is working to add e-commerce features, but lags behind YouTube's mature merchandising ecosystem. YouTube further enables diverse revenue streams like channel memberships, super chats, and even paid channel subscriptions, options not yet available to TikTok creators. Additionally, TikTok's brief video format makes it hard for creators to showcase broader talents. YouTube has birthed whole genres of long-form content that let creators establish themselves as musicians, educators, entertainers, and niche experts. TikTok pigeonholes talent into narrower categories. YouTube even provides far more metadata and audience analytics to help creators strategize and grow. TikTok's algorithmic black box makes it harder for creators to study their audience and optimize content strategies over the long term. Overall, YouTube's first mover advantage, experience with creator monetization, rich features, and data transparency give it a superior model, one TikTok creators are eager to tap into by expanding their presence to YouTube. While TikTok exploded in popularity, YouTube laid the foundation and still offers the most robust creator ecosystem. For TikTok stars seeking stability and income longevity, YouTube's greener pastures will continue luring talent away.
While TikTok has exploded in popularity, major brand advertisers like Apple, Nike, and Coca-Cola have been cautious about embracing TikTok as an advertising platform. There are a few key reasons big brands are still wary. To begin with, the primary audience for TikTok is made up of individuals who are quite young. Around 41% of TikTok's users are between 16 and 24 years old. While these younger users are a highly engaged audience, they often lack the strong spending power that older generations with more disposable income offer. Brands want confidence that their ads will reach high-value customers. Secondly, much of TikTok's content is perceived as edgy, irreverent, or controversial. Videos often contain suggestive dancing, profanity, dangerous stunts, or politically charged content. Let's be honest, it's part of why teens love it. This edgy content makes some brands hesitant about their ads appearing adjacent to videos that could potentially tarnish their image. YouTube provides stricter content moderation to maintain an environment that is considered brand safe for advertisers. The audience on YouTube is diverse in terms of age, which also translates to diversity and in income. This means there are more potential customers with disposable income, making YouTube a highly appealing platform for advertisers. But whenever TikTok has tried to ban or restrict content deemed inappropriate, it has faced backlash from creators complaining of censorship. TikTok is caught between appeasing creators who value the platform's looser regulations and appeasing brands that want protection from association with objectionable content. So far, it has not found an ideal balance. Additionally, TikTok is still viewed as experimental or risky by some old-school brands used to traditional formats like TV ads. They are taking a wait-and-see approach regarding TikTok's long-term staying power and viability as an advertising medium. However, some brands have begun dipping their toes into TikTok campaigns, enticed by the large audience. As TikTok further expands its advertising options and tools, builds trust around brand safety, and diversifies its demographics, major brand advertisers are likely to become less wary of adopting the platform. But for now, some hesitations remain. There is also the matter of TikTok's ownership by ByteDance, which operates a separate Chinese version of the app called Douyin. The content on Douyin is highly controlled and considered to be wholesome, which appeals to Chinese advertisers for its predictability. However, TikTok's content overseas remains unfiltered, leading advertisers to question whether it will ever be a suitable platform for their ads. Currently, TikTok is in a difficult position of trying to satisfy both creators and advertisers, but not fully succeeding in pleasing either. The rise of short-form video poses both opportunities and challenges when it comes to monetization. Platforms like TikTok and Instagram's Reels allow creators to make highly engaging videos in just seconds or minutes. But with such truncated watch times, platforms must get creative to generate revenue. TikTok in particular faces hurdles in monetizing its ultra-short videos. With average view durations of around 30 seconds, each video view results in limited ads and watch time revenue. This makes it difficult for creators to earn substantial income directly from TikTok. The platform has instituted a creator fund to compensate top creators, but payouts pale in comparison to YouTube earnings. Instagram Reels faces similar struggles, though average view times tend to run slightly higher. To boost monetization, both platforms are now testing ways for creators to earn revenue directly from fans. TikTok allows certain users to add tip jars for voluntary tips during live streams. Instagram will soon roll out gifts, badges, and a tipping feature for Reels. Fans can purchase virtual goods to show support. Expanding into e-commerce is another monetization strategy. Instagram and TikTok now facilitate creator shops and in-app sales. Short videos act as marketing to drive product purchases. Live shopping streams, where creators endorse products sold in real time, are gaining traction in Asia and could expand. Lengthening videos to increase watch time is an additional tactic. TikTok recently expanded its maximum video length to 10 minutes, up from one minute. This gradual shift keeps people's shortened attention spans in mind, while allowing for more monetizable content. Stronger demographic targeting and analytics tools can also help brands monetize short-form ad ROI. TikTok and Instagram offer detailed audience insights to attract lucrative marketing dollars. Major challenges remain, like lower view completion rates versus long-form video. 
but both platforms now better incentivize watching full short-form videos through their platforms. And they're sharing more revenue with creators whose content keeps people engaged. Short-form videos may never monetize as lucratively as the old YouTube model of 10 to 20 minute videos, but TikTok and Instagram are proving the format contains untapped commercial potential. As they continue experimenting with what works, short-form commerce could become incredibly profitable. Do they have the time to keep experimenting? How long will it take? Your thoughts are welcome in the comments section below. If you're enjoying the video, please consider leaving a like. YouTube has its flaws, but it gets one thing right, compensating creators fairly. Without that incentive, talent goes elsewhere. TikTok trails far behind in that regard, but it's not creators who pay the price for meager earnings, it's the platforms. TikTok built its empire on creators' backs. Now, feeling undervalued, those same creators are being poached by its rival. It's a familiar pattern we've seen told before. History doesn't always repeat itself, but it often rhymes. The recent departure of creators highlights the precarious nature of depending on someone else's platform. In today's digital age, audiences and their attention are fickle. Their loyalty can change as quickly as closing an app. While the platforms duke it out for dominance, creators remain stuck in the middle, faced with building audiences again and again as the tides change. Is there a solution? Just one word comes to mind. Decentralization. Oh, sorry, that's what? Two, three words? Never mind. The answer may lie in ownership. Creators owning their audiences, not platforms. Imagine a world where creators weren't beholden to the whims of social media giants, where loyalty lies between creator and fan, not algorithms. Blockchain and Web3 hold promise to put power back in the hands of creators, not corporations. The infrastructure is still being built, but the seeds are being planted. As more TikTok stars run to YouTube, perhaps it's time to run somewhere new entirely. Somewhere open, decentralized, and creator first. Somewhere audiences and earnings can't be ripped away at a moment's notice. TikTok's loss may be YouTube's gain, but it's creators who stand to win the most if they chart their own course. The next big platform shift may take us out of walled gardens entirely and into an open web. The choice is ours to make. The mass migration of TikTok stars to YouTube further exposes some of the systemic issues with our major social platforms. TikTok's algorithm rocketed creators to fame, but didn't compensate them fairly. YouTube offers better monetization, but still takes a hefty cut while wielding immense power over creators' livelihoods. Neither option provides creators true ownership over their content and communities. Rather than jumping from platform to platform as they rise and fall out of favor, what if creators built their own decentralized platforms? Using blockchain technology like Web3, creators could launch their own personalized apps slash sites to distribute content while retaining full ownership. Fans could become investors in their favorite creators, sharing in their success. Interoperability between these creator-owned platforms could also allow diverse communities to intersect fandoms of niche interests could connect in new ways, without algorithms siloing people apart. Value and revenue could flow frictionlessly between creator platforms via cryptocurrency, with fans directing support exactly where they choose. There's also a major opportunity to rethink audience engagement. Right now, likes and follows are superficial. However, imagine if being a fan granted access to exclusive content, activities, and experiences within creators' platforms. This would truly reward genuine fandom. Naturally, there are still obstacles to overcome. Moderation, copyright issues, and metadata slash search require rethinking in a decentralized context. Nevertheless, services like OpenSea, Filecoin, and Blockstack offer valuable examples to learn from. As more creators experience the downsides of building their online presence on someone else's platform, decentralization gains momentum. The seeds have already been planted, and the next growth spurt could revolutionize the internet as we know it. Thank you for watching today's video. Do you think that decentralized creator platforms could be a viable solution to the issues faced by TikTok and YouTube? Please feel free to share your opinions in the comments section below. If you found this video helpful, we would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. Your support enables us to reach a wider audience with our content. 
We appreciate your time and encourage you to check out our other videos right here.